and welcome to Rising. We've got an astonishing amount of news to get to today. It's great to have you back in studio, Jessica. It's good to be here to process the weekend's events with you all. Yes, let's get into it. Obviously, we must dive into the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. In a moment, we'll tell you everything that we have learned about the alleged shooter. First, we want to look back at that horrifying moment on Saturday in Butler, Pennsylvania. Take a look at what happened. Oh. The shooter has been identified as a 20-year-old man named Thomas Crooks from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. He was shooting from a rooftop roughly 400 feet away from the president. Now, Crooks worked at a nursing home as a dietary aide. He had a clean background check when hired. He used an AR-15 rifle, which officials believe was purchased by his father. Bomb-making materials also found in the car that he drove to the rally. He is presumed so far to have acted alone. His political leanings not immediately clear. Crooks was registered as a Republican, but he also had donated $15 to a progressive political action committee on January 20th, 2021, the same day Biden was sworn into office. Now, FBI officials have not found any threatening comments on social media accounts. They've been working to get access to his phone, so we might learn more after that. Other details also emerged about Crooks' past. This is how one of his classmates described him. Let's watch. He was bullied almost every day. In what way? Can you explain? Um, I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so. Crooks was turned away from the school's rifle team because he was a bad shooter. He also received an award for math and science his senior year. Meanwhile, while Trump has arrived in Milwaukee ahead of the Republican National Convention this week, he will make a speech Thursday and is expected to call for unity. Speaking to the Washington Examiner, Trump said, quote, This is a chance to bring the whole country, even the whole world, together. This speech will be a lot different, a lot different than it would have been two days ago. Trump also wrote on Truth Social, quote, In this moment, it is more important than ever that we stand united and show our true character as Americans, remaining strong and determined and not allowing evil to win. And in a separate post, Trump said, quote, Unite America. Now, Trump and Biden spoke to each other Saturday night after the shooting on the phone. A lot of people have speculated as to what was said in that conversation. And there are some people familiar with the Act Blue data set. And Thomas Crooks, the donor on January 20th, 2021, was actually a, a 69 year old man in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the mm -hmm. voter file. So, it, so it's, it may not be the same. It person. may not be the same uh, Thomas Matthew Crooks, just mm -hmm. Thomas Crooks, 69 years old. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for, for confirmation that he had ever donated to the Progressive Turnout Pack. But it does seem to me that the initial suspicion that this could be someone who is a Democrat, who wants Joe Biden to win, someone on the opposing team, uh, everyone was worried about that. And because they were worried that there would be retaliatory violence. And I think a lot of people are relieved that the caricature doesn't fit that. Yeah, well, we just have no idea right now. I, I know some of his, some people who knew him in school described him of, as, at that time, seemingly right-leaning or conservative. Of course, that was a long time ago. His views could have changed. His views might have no connection to what he did. You know, they... Uh, presidential assassins, uh, would-be presidential assassins in the past have been motivated by as diverse a range of, of uh, factors as sincere political commitment, as in the case of the uh, person who assassinated President William McKinley, was a committed ideological anarchist, to, you know, would-be um, shooter Hinckley Jr., um, motivated by, like, love of Jodie Foster. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it could have, it could be explicitly ideological, it could be not ideological at all. Um, we just have to wait for more information. And we'll get to, in, in a little bit, we're going to turn to kind of the uh, reaction from conservatives in the media and how people are, you know, parsing this in terms of blame and fault and the rhetoric, the heated rhetoric uh, going on right now. But I was going to save that conversation for just a, a few minutes later. Um, but right now, I think this is, you know, this is, this is an incredible three weeks we have just lived through as Americans in terms mm -hmm. of the amount of um, significant news developing. Um, Donald, Donald Trump was almost assassinated. He came within an inch of being killed. 
um, while running for re-election on the cusp of his fortunes, his likelihood of being re-elected president after four years have never been higher, according to the polling, according to the really bad uh, couple weeks Joe Biden has had in terms of his debate performance, in terms of his fitness for office, the concerns um, increasing in that regard. And Trump was almost killed. We have to make like, no, there's no <laughs> getting around that fact that um, it, it, it's incredible. And I understand why like some people are going to be looking for like conspiracy theories and inside, how could this happen? Because it is frankly incredible that he, the bullet grazed his ear. He was, you know, he's fine. He was slightly injured, but he's you know, fundamentally unharmed. That's the kind of thing that like when it happens in TVs and TV and movies is is implausible. Um, but it it happened, and uh, it's 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 incredible. Um, I, I think everyone should be very very grateful. Obviously, no matter how you feel about Donald Trump, that he was not gunned down as a result of political violence in this country. Um, then we 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 could have had rioting and and like an actual you know, second civil war that people uh, naively fantasize about or expect to be happening. Th there would have been, there could have been rioting in our streets um, in, in addition to the, the psychic shock to the nation, in addition to the just horror of a president being killed. We came this close to that happening. Right, this, this is a, a political movement. It's not just one guy, but they are all behind him. And they are steadfast in their support of him. So it would be such a void in a political movement, they would be missing a leader if Trump was shot and was killed or was shot and injured enough that he wasn't able to continue the campaign. And that kind of void is incredibly destabilizing. So all of the people that are on social media that don't like Donald Trump, that wish him to be dead, that is mm -hmm. a, a group of people that have been very vocal since this happened, that is my worst nightmare. I've lived in rural America. I've seen what Trump supporters say when you ask them about the state of the country. They believe we're on the brink of civil war. This is something that could catalyze a civil war. People thought January 6th could have. And so to think that a successful assassination would somehow be better for the country, it undoubtedly would not. Because the anger would be directed at everyone who's ever said, anything unfavorable about Donald Trump, anyone who questioned his agenda. There would be no one else to direct their anger to, and it would be so much anger that it would probably not be possible to be contained in a peaceful way. It could be horrible for our country if something like that happened. So, you know, Donald Trump, in the moment, he's shot at, he gets down, Secret Service um, covers him. We have a lot of um, views and ideas about Secret Service's actions during this whole thing and how they even allowed this to happen in the first place that we're gonna to get to um, next on the show. But, um, but so, so Trump is covered and then he, he gets up, you know, raises his, his fist. This iconic photo is taken. Um, he is headed to the RNC. He, he's there now. He's, the Republican National Committee is happening this week. I just saw it reported that he's gonna announce the vice president, his vice presidential selection later today. He's speaking later this week. Um, I think he's said to journalists that he uh, he's rethought his speech to focus. Uh, he's refocusing it onto a themes of political unity and uh, and and overcoming our strife as a country. This is Donald Trump's moment, um, and he could he he has the uh, you see reporting that many Democrats have just totally given up hope that they could even there's even a chance Joe Biden could win. So this is Trump's moment, and he has. He has the opportunity to do something that no political figure has done in like the last 10 years to actually try to unite the country or to rise above the division and to, and to speak to, to themes that matter to all Americans, to, you know, to rise above his own um, inclination often to be very uh, focused on um, uh, uh, anger and divisive themes and carnage and all that. Um, this is his time to rethink his approach and, and really speak to themes that would propel him toward a massive, massive victory in November, massive landslide in, in the Electoral College and also in the congressional races, the Senate, the House, et cetera. He has that opportunity um, next time he speaks. Right, and this is, uh, the photograph made him look very cool, according to many people, that he has blood on his <laughs> Many face. people are saying he many looks very cool. Many people are saying he's a hero. Everyone is saying he looks and very so, cool, because yeah, he does. It's, it's a hard photo, I'll say that much, and it's the kind of photo that leaves a lasting impact. It's on the cover of Time magazine, and I think 
while that is one thing, this producing a spiritual awakening in Trump and having him give speeches that are inspiring about unity, I think that could catalyze a launch into the yeah. presidency. If he continued with the same type of rhetoric we saw before this, after this, I, I don't think it would have the same effect. Yeah, I, I mean, the photo is cool because it reflects something that that is, it, it reflects actual bravery and courage on his, his part. To be, you know, at first when we were watching it happen, it's unclear, like, I, there could it, have been was, a second shooter. There could have, right. No, it could have been, you know, he, he was he was fired on. Someone behind him was shot in the head and killed instantly. Uh, uh, there were also injuries, and he was injured. And, you know, to seconds later, to stand up, you're right, there could have been another shooter. From his position, I don't, don't know that he knows the shooter was actually neutralized. To, to stand up again and, and do that um, did reflect... Uh, actual bravery. There's a lot of bravery in the crowd. You know, we, we didn't really talk about that, but people who attempted to render uh, first aid to the person who very sadly was um, was killed. Um, the, the crowd did not panic. They got down. They they did what you're supposed to do in the event of a shooting. There was not people stampeding over each other. Um, it was it was a, a very well handled moment by a lot of people there. But you know, by by bystanders, by civilians. I don't know about the Secret Service. We have, have different kind of notions about, about that and how this was allowed to happen that we're going to turn to um, next. So stay tuned for more Rising. Uh, we're going to be talking about this all day. Lots of angles to get into. Stick around. <laughs>